We're gonna go like so early to mid game not much happens but i will explain a lot of what's going on as well like in the macro sense early to mid game the start yeah early game to mid game um it's a lot about just the macro sense of the game so first off i want to talk about drops um because drops literally your entire game can be decided right off the freaking job uh my game in poland our team lost because, like, we were doing really, really well up until the uh, losers bracket finals, where all of a sudden a team was contesting our drop, and we didn't know how to play around it. Like, we knew we knew how to fight teams on our drop. We practiced that extensively, but the problem is uh, our drop was really, like, really short on loot. It was bad for one team, let alone two. So we got caught in this rut where, like, we didn't want to throw our whole tournament by dropping there, and um, we failed because of that. I think a lot of teams. Um, I mean, all the, a lot of these stronger teams will beat 9 teams out of 10 that drop on them. So, you know, they tend to drop all in the same spot. Uh, I do think for a tournament of this format, and I think this is where NRG kind of failed. And I wanted to tell, like talk to Frex about this, but I'm going to be honest, I don't know how much he like respects my opinion on stuff like that. I'm not saying he doesn't respect me as a player, but like... Usually, like, I, I don't like to tell other people how to play their game if I don't have, like higher achievements than them if that makes sense like credibility more it's more of a credibility standpoint thing i wanted to tell frex i really don't think like they in their scrims they were dropping just capital and some days they did well some days they suffered and i think anytime you're static dropping that happens um i think i and, and i didn't want to talk about this before the tournament um because i didn't want to give away what we wanted to do and i didn't want other people to know what our strategy kind of was going into it because i do think in a, in a mass team tournament like this where you don't know who's in your game you don't know who's going to be in your groups your seating all of that there are a lot of other teams to account for and there's which means by nature of by the law of all the numbers somebody is going to be dropping where you want to drop uh more than likely so i, th I think in a tournament like this and w this is what my what my team did we don't have any bots to review though so i'm sorry for that but what my team did was uh every turn every uh new uh, bracket we went into we would drop we would immediately look out and see where what's open because uh nobody really knows where to drop because no one knows where anyone else is else drops because no one knows all the teams in the bracket so we were looking for whatever's the best spot that's open is and we would go there and basically that's our spot for the rest of that round um and it worked very well for us um i think it's 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 a lot harder to practice because you don't get as much time looting all the same area, but I think it is doable, and I think this is where a lot of the a lot of the top teams failed, or or struggled because they they prefer to drop in one location and just practice that. Whereas that is that's a really good strategy if you're playing in a tournament or in a team with or in a tournament with very like small amounts of teams. But in a tournament like this, man, because Frex talked to me and he was like, dude, uh, he's like, I think you know us dropping fuel depot and not knowing how to play the game with no loot really screwed us but you know if he if they had practiced it kind of going into it practiced variable dropping i think that could have been like a really really big thing um i'm surprised more teams don't employ it i really think that is like the wave going forward unless you're like unless your team is just like on like sentinels and tsm i'm just gonna I'm, I'm gonna refer to them a lot because they are kind of the shining example those teams tend to flourish no matter what i mean obviously they can drop a bad game here and there it happens to everybody but they almost always come out on top in team fights. And if, if you can do that, then heck yeah. Take one spot and just roll with it. But I think most teams really should employ variable dropping for reasons like this. It's why we lost in Poland, why we didn't make it to the grand finals. Uh, I think, and it's partly why NRG, I think, dropped. Like, just from a strategy standpoint. The drop is extremely important. If you mess up your drop, your entire early game loot is scuffed. Your rotation is scuffed. Uh, everything just sucks. It sets up the the game very poorly for the rest of the for your team for the rest of the game. So this, I think teams really need to look at differently at how they drop. Um, again, this is a strategy I didn't want. To, I didn't talk about pre-tournament, but now that it's over, there you go. So uh, I know. So NRG, they kind of did start like variable dropping before the tournament. They were practicing dropping tree. Uh, and I think since they know Sentinels isn't in a lot of these games, they tend to drop sorting. But as soon as they entered the bracket with Sentinels in it, 
they dropped uh, Fuel Depot, and they weren't comfortable with that drop. Uh, thoughts on playing early position slash rotation with path versus edge of zone with Jibby. Seems like the more successful teams TSN and Sun mainly have that I have seen. Set up early and kill the edges team edge teams rotating into zones late. Yes. So that comes hand in hand with practicing your rotation fast. That's the biggest thing is a lot of teams that I've played with, because I've I've had to play with a lot of different teams because people love to team hop. A lot of people that play path and teams that play path, what they'll do is they'll drop on a beacon, get it, but they'll spend so much time looting and wasting time on rotating that they never actually get to the point they want to get to. Um, and that's the big thing is these other teams that do run path are very good at very quickly looting what they need to. They don't. They might not even loot the entire point of interest. I'm pretty sure Sentinels doesn't loot all of uh, all of sorting. They leave some of it because they they get as much as they need and they dip because positioning is more important than getting than min maxing every little bit of loot you can possibly get. Uh, Visions, thank you for the brand new sub, man. I appreciate that. But, um, so, if you are playing Path, if you are a team that's exploring the option of playing Path, if you like it better than Jibby, uh, you need to prioritize practicing your rotations faster than you normally would if you had a Jibby. If you had a Jibby, you had so- you have- you honestly buy yourself so much more time to loot, because you can play end Edge of Zone with Jibby. Um, Jibby's an overall just a safer, more comfort pick, if your team is good with him. Uh, he will allow you to survive more situations than a Path would. But a path can guarantee you very high placings if you start to get good at doing it. And and But also part of it is predicting where zone 2 is actually going to end up going. There, a lot of the top teams are very good at predicting. That's why they're there. That's why they play path. So a lot of that really, really is important. So they land sorting. It's very smart. This place is absolutely stacked with loot. Uh, it's amazing how much Sentinels can get away with. But that's also because nobody wants to fight Sentinels. Why throw? Why have a high chance of throwing your freaking tournament by choosing to 50-50 Sentinels? That's the one team on the board you don't want to 50-50. And that's what's so interesting about BRs in general, is like, that team garners so much respect from people that don't want to fight them, that they get, by nature of that, they get so much more loot than everybody else. It's crazy. Like, it's such an interesting, uh, like, ecosystem almost. Um, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, I have been, uh, noob, yes. We were going Lava Fish originally, then we went to Train Slash Drill. Okay. Wait, more just landed on Ace's head? Yeah, so that's also, that right there, Cryptify, is part of... That is part of teams being unfamiliar with new drops. People kind of, like, scramble to drop somewhere. People kind of scramble to drop somewhere, uh, immediately. And that's a lot of what this... The problem with... A lot of teams, as soon as they start to doubt their strategy in a tournament, they will all of a sudden be like, oh, well, maybe we should just drop here and just loot here since it's open. And that's great. You know, getting loot is awesome, but min-maxing your drop is so big. Uh, I practiced with several... So I practiced uh, before in GLL, just to give a bit of an example. For uh, GLL, I played with Decop and, and Solve. And we practiced the heck out of our drop, where we would get out of there... Um, by like uh, 125 left on the zone timer like maximum we left there sometimes way earlier than that but then I'll play with some like teams that you know I just am trying out with and it's so like disorganized that we won't leave until the zone starts closing and th that's a massive difference man every second matters in the first zone rotation um, I actually recall NRG I think NRG got screwed in one of the tunnels into Skyhook and I remember in just in chat, I forget who it was, but someone random in chat said, LOL, TSM rotated through that tunnel 30 seconds before you and they had absolutely no troubles. It's incredible how much timing absolutely matters. So right away, you can tell that because Moore is dropping on Ace's head, you can tell immediately like they, they have not practiced this. And that will, it doesn't hurt them this round because they end up slaughtering this round anyways. But small things like that, this is why I don't. I believe that teams should not be. Every team practices one drop, and I just disagree with that wholeheartedly. I learned the hard way in Poland. Um, I really think that it's not the way. If you want to guarantee better results, it's not the way to go moving forward. And I think there's a lot that you can do to prepare yourself for any drop. You just need a coach. Wink. So how teams normally do it? Um, it smiles. Is. We all scrim so much that we know the majority of the circles that come out in the game the second we see the first circles. I mean, we're a lot of us, you know, we, we do guess wrong. We do read it wrong sometimes. But, oh, there we go, we got audio now. 
Okay. Alright, so basically what happens is we all, everyone lands at their spot, and then we immediately open the map once the circle is revealed, and then we all look to see what the circle is going to be, and what we think it's going to go to. And ideally, you want to rotate as early as possible, but that's also, that's very determinant depending on your loot. Uh, if you have just absolutely garbage loot, and like you have more, the, like routes that you can still take to get more loot, Sometimes it is better to do that. A lot of it depends on your team comp. If you're running, if you're running path, sometimes you need to cut your losses and just run. Get to the new, get to the new zone. Um, if you're running Jibby, then you're you can afford the ability to loot a little bit more. But basically, you want to read where the circle is, and you ideally want to get to a very strong spot within one of the last few circles that you know it's, it's probably going to be around. Sometimes it's not always the best to be in the middle of a spot. Sometimes it's best to be in like a power spot that's overlooking and that guarantees your team an easier rotation when you need to take it, if that makes sense. It, it, a lot of the way you play the game depends on your loot. If you have really bad loot, it's hard to hold and rotate. It's hard to rotate into power spots and hold them because you don't have the loot to sustain that. If any team, a lot of how teams f approach these fights. Okay, so for example, like power spots um, would be something like this choke. This choke is a really big power spot. It's a very, very big rotation into a lot of where these circles are. I, I know they're fighting, and I'll get to that in a sec. Um, and if and it gives your team, it gives you if you hold this choke, it gives your team rotation options from the north and the south. So you could rotate through a lot of the really big chokes. And it, even better, it gives you the team or the the ability to deny access to every other team to that choke, so they can't rotate through that. Um, on top of, there's a lot of circles where uh, it'll end to like the north of this, so you can you can hold this spot for a long time. But that's if you have the gear for it, because a lot of teams approach team fights with, if a team is looking to take your spot, they try to uh, rather than just like shooting to do damage, they try to shoot every single person on the team immediately to get information on their armors. Um, if you're a team that's running like triple blue or like two blues and a purple and you shoot at a team in a power spot that has like two whites and a blue, most teams are going to push that because they're like, I want, I want to take that spot. Um, so the, uh, but power spots genuinely, don't, it doesn't mean that it's the best spot within the last circle. Power spots are usually really strong, like, uh, environmental positions that you can hold for a long period of time. Um, or that you that you can do like this is one or all of these options that you can hold for a long period of time That you can ho hold out a lot of teams that are trying to rotate so you can get off like a lot of kills and One of the biggest ones is it's an easy spot to rotate from once you need to do it later in the game So it doesn't doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be sitting in the middle of the, cir the last circle You can call exactly where the last circle ends because a lot of where you stand depends on your spot if you if you're in a very hard def to defend spot, someone's gonna probably take it, or you're probably just gonna get chipped at by every G7 scout in the game. P chat, thank you for the Twitch Prime. I appreciate that. It means a lot, man. So I remember this circle. I, I Ace isn't really opening his map, so this ain't helping me at all. But at this circle, uh, I believe it ends. We all of us read it as ending right here, in this town. It's a very common ending. Uh, so this house right here is a very strong. This is this house is a power spot, for example. Because what this house does is it enables you to hold... This choke is not a very good spot to be in. And this house enables you to cut off one of the very big chokes very safely. So this house is a power spot. Um, it's probably the best house to hold uh, out of all of these. This house just sucks to defend in general right here. This little like this rec uh, rectangle one. It's just it's not a very easy spot to hold, but it's just a spot. It's a house that you can take early on to at least guarantee you'll probably get some placement. But if any of these teams surrounding you... Know that you have, for example, poor armors. They are going to probably push you at some point. So it's not the best spot to like hold. Uh, this house also can be rough because a lot of teams will sometimes suicide funnel through the choke if they have no other options. And they'll probably end up running and trying to take your house. Uh, this house is strong as well, though. This beacon house that th that is currently pinged. That is also a power spot. This donut is also a major power spot. But a spot like this would, determine, would depend on your weapons. If you're running... And you shouldn't ever be running this. But if like three of you are running R9 Peacekeeper, uh, this house or this donut is not a good spot to hold. Uh, I mean, nobody will be able to push you, but you're not going to really like do anything to anyone else. Uh, now, if you're running like two scouts, then this donut is a very strong, very strong spot. The circle rarely ever ends up here. 
but it's very very uh it's a very strong spot you you control a lot of the tempo around this area anyone that tries to push you're right there you're right there to shoot at anybody um you can zip over immediately and gap close very fast you don't need to need a pathfinder to do that um this spot is really strong this donut it's it again it won't the circle won't really ever end there but you can you can do a lot with this uh with this spot sparkling rabbit thanks for the follow as well as chalky thank you guys um, uh, yeah, on top, there's a lot of cargo bots here, too. Alright, we're gonna keep going. So, Energy's going for this house. I wanted this house from the get-go. Uh, they, I didn't see where Zerg came from. But, and I'm just talking about, like, the macro sense for now. I wanted this house, too. I remember this game. I pinged this, and I was like, I was like, I doubt we're gonna get this, but let's go for this house if we can. There's Altex down here. So... Not much is going to go on here, because they're going to hold this house for like the next 10 minutes. Thank you, Ace, for finally opening the circle, or, or the map. So, we, I think in this, we landed, we landed Skyhook in this round. No. We landed Train Yard. And I wanted to get here. I wanted to get here very early, but we, I remember my personal, uh, our personal problems where we had low, ar weak armors. So it was hard for us to scout. We held this, uh, tower forever. Uh, to kind of just like uh, disable teams from rotating and being behind us because a lot of rotating into later later circles in this game a lot of it is just making sure your back is clear if you're not in a power spot or if you're not in the middle of the circle you need to make sure your back is clear um, because rotations in this game work very much like a I'm, I've been trying to think of a good analogy for this chat maybe you can help me out but it's, it's kind of like a line almost like one team say could be holding this tower that's right behind the play button and that that team is holding out a lot of other teams for rotating. The second that team rotates, um, another team is going to take that, right? And it's just going to keep funneling in. So you, one of the most important things you can do in this game is make sure your back is always clear from the next team that's coming up behind you. Uh, I don't know what a good analogy for that would be. Leapfrog? Not really the leapfrog. Because leapfrog would mean you're kind of skipping over people. How about the house with the beacon in the town? It can see all the chokes. How's it not better than the house energy has right now? Uh, it can. It, this is a very strong spot as well. Th these are these are the sh three strong spots. Uh, d the donut, the beacon house, and the house they're in. The reason this house is very is a lot stronger is because it secures their back. Uh, the circle can end here a lot. It ends like right outside this. Uh, it can end like out here, and it ends like out here, typically. Um, if it ends out here, they basically have their entire back covered, and that's why that's one of the reasons it's a really, really strong spot, and it's very defensible. Um, the Beacon House is also very strong because yes, you have a lot of different angles you can cover, but it's a little bit tougher because a lot of a lot of people are likely to fight for it. So this one, this one can be difficult. Um, a lot of people look to take the house for sure. Um, and if, if, if one fight does break out, every single house here is going to try to, like, third party. But, uh, that's one of the things with power spots as well, that I actually forgot to mention, is how likely is that spot to get pushed? Even if it's a good spot, how likely is it to get pushed? Uh, this beacon house is eventually very likely to be pushed, or people will take your roof or something. So, this is, it is a strong spot, but I don't think it's the strongest spot. Um, unless your team is insanely good at brawling. Uh, so to me, I usually rotate to where the circle's pulling t uh, towards more. So the screen cap shows the circle going towards right. So I would have went to the right circle. Right. So if you're in this situation, I mean, if you're in this particular situation, you don't, you can't freely go there because every team is probably at this point, everything is taken. Um, but circles don't always work like that. Yeah. To read it. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, it's going to end right here. Like that's why they have it pinged actually. Even NRG thought it was going to end here. And it can. I, I don't remember. Oh wait, no, it actually doesn't. No, I remember where this game ends. It actually doesn't. This this circle was a little mess. Like normally, this circle that actually ends up being is a little bit more uh, obvious. But no, this right now, this circle looks like it's going to end here. So right now, um, Ace is just running around, kind of scouting around the areas. I'm assuming trying to get information on armors and stuff like that as well. You always want to know, ideally if you can, you want to know like the armors of the of people that are around you. Because if you have to take a fight on a team, sometimes it's more beneficial to take a fight on a team that you wouldn't normally. Only because they have weaker armors and it's probably an easier fight. 
All right, so uh, just for reference, my team is actually on the tower right now over here through the choke. Um, we do eventually get mopped here by by uh, NRG. We try to rat it out because our, our situation is not great and we know there's a team in here. So we try to rat it out. And I told my team to stick hard on me. Like... When we left the tower for a particular reason, I didn't I didn't elaborate why. But it was because I know that there is a sight line from here to there. I know that if a team if, if one of them is watching and they see us move, they will hold us out. And that's why I, res I I requested my team to sit hard on me and just move with me. I don't know which one of them got spotted, but one of them took the zip line back instead of just jumping down and following my exact footsteps. And they got spotted and we do end up getting wiped by energy. It'll happen here once the circle starts closing. I'll start to slow it down. Hmm. Frex makes the call. I mean, any any good team, even if, regardless if we were spotted or not, any good team that's sitting here would go back here real quick just to make sure there's no rats that'll mess them up, that'll screw up their rotation. So, um, they probably would have checked anyway, but there is a p certain point where uh, I think a where Ace yeah. does see us coming in. My team is stick together, or are you going to play with others from your org for the following events? Um, people hit the zip right here. Yep, see, there it is. I did not want my team to hit the zip, and one of them did. So, now the circle... We wanted to rat it out. and They, they come in here, and they, quite honestly, they just mop us. It, it's not even a close fight. This is us hiding in the corner here. Our gear is not the best, we just get mopped. And they hit all their shots. They destroyed us very fast. Alright, so... The circle did take a big, unfortunate turn. Um... Power spots for this circle would be absolutely this house, because then this house can, uh, th this house isn't fully in, but you can play late on this house and pretty much try to screw every team trying to rotate. However, if you're playing on, like, the roof here, obviously other teams will probably take shots at you, but this house is definitely good. And I believe that little crevice is still in, so you can actually, like, rat out there a little bit. But the house is a really solid spot to try to, like, screw everybody else that's trying to rotate in. Uh, there are a lot of like good spots. There's a lot of good rat spots down here if you're a solo in like the cave or the, the cavern, but energy is feeling pretty good. Uh, there's no reason for them to take the low ground um, when they don't have to. Um, also, the spots over there are very good, and they're being currently fought for. That cliff, the cliff over here is the strongest spot, probably. Not so much right now in this particular circle. Here, it's like over here. But it will be a very, very strong spot once this circle starts to shrink a little bit, if that cliff is still in. Do you have zip? Do you have zip more? Yeah, we could, we could drop down and zip up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, I'm with it. I'm with it. Let's go, let's go now. Come so on. this is actually a strong, pretty strong play. We can play underneath here, can we? Can we just play here? Uh, no, no, I feel like up top is, I feel like up top is better. I like this okay, team could okay. reach up top a I'm curious what they want to do. This is our fallback spot. This will be our fallback spot if we can't play up here. Yeah, so, so energy's taking, they're trying to take a risk here. They want to go for, obviously, a stronger spot if they can get it. But they have at least secured a better spot, and this is this Pathfinder. One thing is really I really miss about not playing Pathfinder or not having a Pathfinder in team is zipping. Man, that stuff is so so crucial in times like this. Otherwise, they'd have to take that one zip that everybody sees. But now they can set up like kind of like their own little incognito zip. Uh, right now, they're banking on a lot of teams fighting in this area to try to get in, clean, come in and get a quick uh, cleanup on a third party. Um, so they actually have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let me... uh, I think this team is rotating because it's very odd that they're not set up because I think this is a Watson. Gate them, gate them, gate them. This is actually, a, so this is a pretty strong spot. It's very open, but it can be very, you'd have to play the angles properly. I think a, a, an amateur team here could get picked very easily and it could be very, it could be a weak spot. But if it's a good team that knows how to play this area, a lot of spots is how, do you know how to play the area? Because there are some spots you wouldn't think are very strong power spots, but there are teams like Sentinels, there's one particular spot that Sentinels love to play, right north of Sorting, that you wouldn't think is a great spot, but they are so good at holding it that it's actually such a such a strong spot. And a lot of that depends, again, on the team's ability to run a certain area. I don't know what you mean by that illusion. So this team, I think this team that was just here rotated to this. And the problem with, oh, this is one of the problems with like rotating very, very early is if you're in a spot, like you have to be very cognizant of the spot that you are rotating in 
because if you you have to know versus where all the other teams are if you are rotating in the middle of teams you're you are putting yourself in a in not a great spot so like this this team probably thought they could play this and then be safe but this is not a strong spot because of how easy it is to get poked from everywhere almost, almost ex like no matter where you are down low down low or on the high ground almost you can always get poked by somebody so this spot is like even though this looks like it'd be a good really really solid spot this spot like this structure doesn't get good until like the last circle but um when it's this open still when there's still a lot of squads left this is a very weak spot the team that was playing this they should have played these boxes and they should have held out they should have made sure their backs were clear and held out nrg from behind so this is what I was talking about um, with that like analogy, which I still have the lack of. I don't know what to call it. Uh, they rotated early to get to get to a spot they thought was good, so NRG filled the spot that they took, and now NRG is at their back and picking at them, and now they're in a really rough spot. So. So yeah, they're just getting poked by everybody. It's just not gonna work out. Yeah, so you can see more down to uh, death call guy. G Dolphin finished him. So, one thing that's also, and this is more of a tip to everybody out there that's also watching, one thing that's very tough uh, and you have to be cognizant of when you're doing something like this if you're wiping to push a team that's in a bad spot and you really like your spot, you have to immediately, like, it's almost not a bad idea to teleport to the loot. Because you have to be very quick. If a, if a if there's a smart team that's behind you, again, the same analogy. I really need to think of a freaking name for it. Um, if you go to push a team that's in a bad spot, like NRG is doing right now, and there's a smart team that's behind you, but you might not like know it, maybe like across the way or something. Uh, if you leave a strong spot to push a team in a weak spot, even if you kill them, that doesn't mean you're gonna win. You have to get back to your spot immediately. I like almost prioritize like say you just say you just uh wipe this team right here it's almost it's smarter for probably the Watson and whoever your other character is to go back to your spot and ensure that you aren't being pushed because any team that's not in the strong spot every team that's in like a weak area is going to look for the teams that are in the strong area to leave their spots so they can snatch that shit right up under them so that's this is one thing you have to be careful of so so setting up sometimes a wraith portal in between locations just so you don't lose your location is a very good idea and can be a good use of your portal if you don't need to use your portal for the next rotation, which is something that you'll have to decide situationally. Mirrored? Well, no, no. So I'm thinking like, it's not necessarily mirrored. You're you're on the right path there, Geesh. I'm thinking like, you have like four teams, right? And it's almost like a freaking conga line, but I don't think conga line's a good... Uh, analogy for it one team leaves a really strong spot to rotate in another team fills it and then another team fills that spot and then it like it keeps it's like almost like a machine right didn't wraith not have port here no she didn't i'm not i'm not critiquing nrg's play in particular here on this i'm just saying it's like a broader sense teaching people that to not leave a good spot just to get loot because somebody will take your spot if you are in a very very good spot musical chairs might not be a bad way to put it No, these aren't finals. I'm watching, uh... Hey, I'm healing, I'm healing. I want to watch... So, I'm watching currently NRG and how they did in this round. Because they did very well in this round. And I'm curious to see what the differences are between what they did in this round and what they did in the next round. To really, like, try to see, like, what went wrong, so to speak. A factory line? Maybe factory line is just the way to put it. There's two teams here. So... They're fighting. We third this. We third this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming, coming. I they I they just I'm in my Ace actually pops off here. I watched this. I watched this happen after uh, we died. Ace, Ace popped off here. This is just the strength of having a, such a fragger on your raid, dude. That's like that was nuts. Hold up. That's. I mean, they were both low, but that spray transfer just like, bro. This guy's. He's clean with it. Like that's fucking. That's nice. You, that's just one of those things you love to see. So right now, circles, we got 18 seconds going in the next circle. This is a very wide open circle. These circles generally, Pathfinder teams can struggle very heavily on, and it's always so impressive to me how they win these. Um, right here, uh, this is very open. 
there are it's just a bunch of like sulfur rocks and stuff to recover and i think there's a tractor like down here i don't know if it's actually on the map but right now the strong spots are obviously this little uh it's it's a bit of a double-edged sword, but this this high ground that they're on is very strong, but it can also subsequently also be picked at very easily from across the way. This, they have a little bit of high ground in, and anybody else that's like down here potentially can look up here and just like shoot at them. They can they're very when you have a high ground spot like this where you don't have that much cover, you're at a huge liability to just get picked apart by everybody. So you want to make sure even if you have the high ground, you need to make sure that you have at least like somewhere to hide, and potentially you might even want to rat it out because. A lot of teams don't want to get destroyed by the guys that are on the high ground. So a lot of people, this will be a focal point for a lot of teams that aren't up here. Um, so this is a very strong spot, like I said. I think there is a team over on the rock as well, and they need to be careful of that. Can we play on what then? Um, yeah, I did, Verna. I did see it. We can play it here, but I don't know if we get grief. Do we get grief across? So that's, and that's exactly what Ace is talking about. Is he? They they want to play the high ground, but they're worried about these this team across the way, um, just destroying them. So a lot of times you also when you're playing these uh, areas you, you can even play a very weak spot if everybody else is like busy And obviously you just saw this team over here like on the rock. They're doming right now They're in the middle of like a tough fight so you can use this window of opportunity while they're busy To try to at least secure yourself that your next rotation or get picks kills whatever there's a lot you can do here and sometimes it's very important to, it's not sometimes it's almost always very important to act when another team with the, when like another team that's very like indirectly kind of like forcing you guys to uh, play passively like that team would if they are busy ever you need to act and make that use of that time either try to help finish them off or try to like use whatever information you can to secure your next rotation whenever they give you that free space Play the high ground right here, I still don't know if you can from across. Wait, kill this guy, kill this guy, I'm being down. And still, um, and there's a still team in bubble, I think. We need to kill the bubble team. If they can eliminate this team, they're freaking golden. Focus this team, the bubble team. So this this is a very good strategy right here, is to call to focus people. I'm coming with you. That's, a that's something a lot of uh, younger teams, and young I mean younger as in like experience, um, like newly scrimmers, don't do. Um, identifying for your entire team, what team should be your... Uh, obje uh, object of focus so that's very important if you're a young scrim team to make sure you do that um, because that, that's a very big IGL call ace isn't the IGL but it doesn't matter who makes that call if there's one team that can particularly fuck you guys over make sure your team understands on they're all on the same page on what team needs to go that's very big in these late game circles because all it takes is one team in a, in a better spot than you to screw you over and if you can get rid of that team then all of a sudden you are the most dominant team so obviously right now they're just going for they're just going for a kill points wherever they can shooting fish in a barrel this is like the ideal tournament situation right here i'll see always break all watson gens i can't say how many teams i played with and they never shoot the watson gen i'm spamming names down here i broke two wait i think i should shoot good call by frex Okay, yeah, Mo. Nice suit. All right, so now, unfortunately, so that team is done being busy across the way, and now that team, that team has better cover and better head glitch spots than NRG right now. So they're in like a more dominant position, and NRG, a lot of what you need to take into account is the circle of speed, how how fast the next circle is gonna move. If you are on the slow side of the circle, like this team over here is right now, uh, you have to move last, and that's a big advantageous spot because that means. Uh, all the teams that are probably rotating uh, outside of cover can easily be destroyed by you. So, um, the circle speed and on what side of the circle you're on really matters uh, in terms of your speed or your rotation, how, how fast you have to think and move. So, this team is now in the power spot. Uh, like I said, they have better head glitches. Uh, they can, NRG is going to play a little bit more defensive here, thinking what their next move should be. Do we play, do we play this rock is that, or do we play under them? No, 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 no. We play Frex makes an insanely good call here. I watched this live. He made a really, really good call here. He's calling to play the bottom right of the uh, of the mountain that they're on. Put the portal under them. I'm just trying to stay here. Like, there's not a lot of cover. 
But they are in such a good spot right now. That team up there in the rock is hiding because they were getting shot at. So now uh, Frex and Moore are taking that are taking the opportunity. While that team is busy, the, the team on the rock, they're taking the opportunity to grief as many people around them as they possibly can and make their lives harder. Also, run uh, DMCK and Callus Burst. Thank you guys for the follows. Yes, Naysayer, she is. Uh, I just practice a lot with Burna Bros. Just one, do 1v1s. 1v1s with the wingmen will teach you a lot about the gun. Notice the patience here. Ace doesn't want to take shots until he can get like a, seek a lot of damage. So, this team that was on top did not know. Uh, I don't think they knew Ace was under them. Or at least they couldn't do anything about it. Ace rotating early actually screwed them over real hard. And this is a big thing you can do on Wraith. Is you kind of like, you throw your portal, but don't take it back. You don't have to rotate with your team as Wraith. Um, Ace played this incredibly smart by hiding underneath them to screw them up. Taking damage right when the zone starts moving is the worst time ever to take damage. So uh, he did like, he cracked the Pathfinder immediately. So that means that Pathfinder has to sit back and bat. Or even worse, has to sell up as his team's about to start rotating in. So that, that's really big. And then as they're jumping down, uh, Ace is right there to just mop up what his whole team is. So Ace actually played that incredibly well. Frex made a really smart call. Most teams would probably just play behind this rock, and they still could probably get away with it. Uh, Frex made a really, really, really good call to play down um, underneath that mountain. I don't think that a lot of people would play there. But... Um, Part of the reason I think he made that call was because it was the slow, slower side of the circle. So he knows this team over here is going to have to rotate and this team's probably going to focus on them a lot. It's a very risky call because they don't have a Gibraltar, so they don't have a lot of work, cover to work with here, but they I mean, pulled it off perfectly. Just off, right here, right here. But Frex, Frex identified that that team on the rock was their biggest problem. And uh, they needed to make sure that they kind of like... Th now, this is one analogy I like. I didn't come up with this one. But they wanted to be the bread in this situation. And this is actually a call out you can use with your teams out there all you want. I won't take any royalties and neither will the guy who made this call out. But I think a very like... In, in BRs, you always want to be the bread in, in terms of sandwiches. You don't want to be the meat. If you're the meat, everybody sandwiches you. You just want you want to be on the outside of the fight at all times. You want to be the bread, and that's what this play was right here. It forced, it forced that team on the rock, to be kind of the meat of the sandwich in the middle of the three teams that were left. So, it was a really smart, really smart uh, call by Frex to play that, because if you saw Ace was just pinging those rocks, he's like, hey, let's just play the rocks. If they played that rock, yeah, they're in decent cover, but they're the meat of the sandwich, and a lot of teams are probably gonna, both teams are probably going to try to like converge on them. So Frex made a really, really heads up play by telling them to go to this side of the mountain. Absolutely great call by Frex. And this is why he's a very, very good IG. It kind of like makes sense of that and I just could not. Be the bread. And like that's such a very quick way to calm that to your team. You're like, it's a little goofy, but like, it's a very good way. If your team understands the analogy, it's a very good way to just be like, yo, yo, be the bed, be the bread. And your team will back off from being like the center of attention in the fight. It's actually really, it's like a very solid calm. Go ahead, use it. I think, who did, who made that mo? Was it Mwaman? I think Mwaman made it. Did Ace and Moore say anything about the call? Uh, no, all, all that happened was there was a time where Ace was looking and he was like, yo, we should play here, we should play here. I think I know what you're getting at because I know a lot, a lot of what NRG I've noticed fails at in their late, late game is they aren't cohesive as a team on calls. Uh, Frex is definitely a good IGO, but um, sometimes more and Ace don't go with his calls. Um, I'm pretty, so Ace right here, Ace is Ace is gonna start looking for spots. Frex immediately calls, no, we should play over here, and they all listened. And this is why their end game went very well. They were all on the same page. They understood immediately as soon as Frex said where to go. They understood immediately what needed to happen. Do we play, do we play this rock? Is that See, look. Do we play under them? See, he plays right here, and then they are the bread of this, of, of this sulfur water river sandwich. Very good call by Frex. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, I'm gonna do it over here. I don't want to do it over here. Like, standing. like, notice, Ace is immediately respecting the call, and they do very well here. 
and this is really smart too, is while they're fighting. It's very smart to rotate. A lot of teams, a lot of amateur teams will look at people fighting and they're like, oh, grease them, grease them, get kill points, which isn't a bad idea. But a lot of smarter teams, while other teams are distracted, will focus on grabbing the strong like spot of the circle. They, there's, they're, they're, they, they see other teams fighting as an opportunity to get a really strong rotate. And that's that's a big difference between a lot of the younger, like more uh, amateurish teams and the pro teams. Big, big difference. Um, your priority always in games should be to rotate. So if you see an opportunity might be creating by created by another team that might be fighting another team, you take that and just rotate. Like even if you get a knock, if you get a knock on a team that's like next to you, that doesn't mean you push them. That that's usually a really good opportunity for you to move around them and leapfrog them in their rotation. I put the portal under them. I'm just trying to stay here. But yeah, we've already seen this, so we'll go to the next game. So this game, they were just... They they didn't have the best rotations the last, like, three zones, but they still made the best of it. They fragged out. Ace went... Popped off. Let me look at the stats here. Ace popped off. They all did. They all did damage, but uh, Ace... Eight kills, 1,800 damage. Ace popped pretty hard. Um, and they all played as a unit, and they won. That, now that's sad. Your boy popping a big, dropping a double donut, baby. Let's go. Uh, yeah, it's the quarters. So this, they already pinged it. It's going to be a circle around this area. They already know. Frex is reading this very well. So holding this tunnel is very strong. So uh, energy is very aware. So let's jump back into this game. Energy is very aware that the circle is going to end inside uh, Skyhook. They're very aware, but what they're doing is they're taking a power spot. This tunnel is a huge power spot, like I've been talking about, because it will stop any team from rotating through here. One, to make it harder for a lot of other teams. Two, the, probably the bigger reason is so energy makes sure that nobody comes up and flanks them from behind, because tunnels in this on this map can very quickly turn from a power spot to, holy shit, we're getting fucked from both ends, like a porn star, and we're just dead. You know what I mean? So you got to be very careful how you play tunnels. Very careful. I think this is a very... This is a good way to play it. Play one one side very extremely and wait until the circle closes. Running the same team for future weeks of ALGS? I'm not sure, Lane. I don't really know what's going on. Yeah, the Riley Reed of Apex. Um, I don't actually know where energy rotates into here, uh, so I'm looking at this pretty blindly because I died. I, I'm ratting at this point because my team is dead and then fucking Peach scouts four taps me with a scout from this uh, hotel building. Um, so basically, yeah, this circle is going to end somewhere about here. or it, it actually ends here in this like open courtyard, and this is um, this is one that actually took me by surprise. Like The general ending is always in this area, but usually it ends over here. This one took me by surprise. I think it took everyone by surprise. It was a very open ending, but... Heck, open ending, open ended. Anyways, um, so usually the power spots in this are basically any buildings with strong vertical presence. Um, so this hotel building, uh, this diner can be stronger later on, but unfortunately, as long as this hotel building remains in play, no one can ever play this roof. So this hotel building is very strong. It's the biggest vertical presence, I think. This one has one as well. This like hotel building to the left here. Um, these are the ones that are going to like make the rotations difficult for a lot of people. Um, I'm not sure where uh, energy goes here. It's very tough to know. I can't necessarily call where they're going to go because I don't really know what... Ev everything else is pretty much taken, so I don't really know where they go on this one. I'll be interested to see here. What do you mean by macro calls? Like when to rotate and what positions to hold? Yes. Basically understanding what circle it is, A, as soon as they see it. B, uh, rotating to that circle and what path they choose to take. The fights they choose to take. Uh, the spots they choose to hold. And, uh, like, and just the speed at which they do it all. A lot of that is, like, the macro plays that they, they aren't, that they still need to kind of learn how to do. The top of the center building of Skyhook is still in. That would be the highest tier, right? This, um, yes and no. This place is a little, so, I'd say yeah, no. Normally, Hold yes. But, so, there's, there's an interesting thing in BRs where, very high ground, depending on the situation, is either extremely good or extremely bad. If this, if let's say the center of the circle was on this middle pole, so I'm assuming that's what you're talking about, like with this high ground up here. Highest ground doesn't always mean best ground. Um, and from a general standpoint, it can, but not always. So if the circle, let's say it's over the middle of this and it's around the size of this with a lot of buildings surrounding it, the top is actually, it's, it's holdable, but it's bad in the sense that 
you need to make sure you have good armors because every team is going to be poking at you. And if there's a team that sees, like, that scouts your armors and sees that you have, like, two whites and a blue and you're trying to hold this, that's a mistake. You're going to get run over by a good team that's going to take that spot because they have better gear than you. That's one thing also teams, younger teams need to do. Takasugi, thanks for the follow, by the way. So you can only hold this if you have a high amount of resources and really good gear. You know, you, you always need to be able to gauge what spots you can take relative to what gear your whole team is working with. What's your what's your fighting potential? Are you good close range? Do you have the guns for close range? Uh, are you only able to poke at people? And then you need to take whatever gear your team has and apply that to the best likely uh, scenario for relative to your gear, if that makes sense. So if a team with like whites and stuff was sitting up here early on in the circle, they are going to get shredded. So I would recommend they play like down here where there's a shit ton of cover and they can just play for placement. But um, and then later on when the circle starts to close and a lot of these other buildings don't have a line of sight on them, then later on, the more and more the circle would close and shrink, the stronger the spot gets. Early on, it's bad. As the circle gets smaller, it gets much, much stronger. Like exponentially stronger as the circle closes. And that's true of any of these buildings. Like this diner right now sucks. No one's gonna play this roof. But if the circle were to close on this hotel, all of a sudden, and like it was out here, all of a sudden this roof is extremely strong. So you, it's very important for you to understand situationally how environment works relative to the circle and relative to your gear. That's a very, very big point. You can't just take every spot with R9 PKs and then think like you can hold teams off. Maybe close range you can, but you, you can get picked apart very easily from the long range. What would a player do to improve their working macro knowledge of the game? What I'm doing right now. Uh, VOD reviewing better teams. VOD reviewing yourself. And just scrimming and learning a lot. So knowing circles is a very big part of it, Sparkling Rabbit. So you got to make sure you do that. <clears throat> yes, what Lomax is. It's very griefable up there. You have, to be, you have to be a strong team to hold this up here very early on. Good high ground is low angles. High ground with multiple angles uh, from good enemies. From enemies isn't good to hold. Yeah, exactly. But that can change depending. All that changes relative to the circle. Pudge is a fan favorite. All right, so very strong spot. So there. Okay, so this spot is cozy as fuck. We're playing here. Yeah. This is, this is for the circle. They think it's gonna be. They think it's gonna be out here or like out here or out here. It was probably not gonna be out here, but they think it's gonna be right where their ping is. This is a good spot to play. This okay. So this right here is a prime example of when things can be rough with when your wraith isn't the IGL. Like, Frex is an insanely good IGO. He's one of the best in the game. But this is like... Wraith gets uh, access to knowledge that no other, no one else on the team ever gets. In very small split-second decisions. Had there been a team here... Like, they're like obviously, like... this is, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, necessarily, what they're doing. Um, because, you know, they're not in any direct pressure. No one's really fighting them. So it's not bad for them to, like, kind of talk it out and see what better spot they can get. But had this been, like, a spot of contention... And all of a sudden they started getting fought at or getting into a fight. If they're split at all here, one of them could easily get picked. They could easily get picked. So this is really this is why Wraith IGL I think is very superior as a character to be IGL. Um, is because she always gets more information than anyone on her team, um, especially when doing portal plays. And portal plays will be will be the make or break. If you have a bad Wraith that can't portal properly, you'll have a very hard time getting to the late game. Okay, wait, oh, this is this is that factory line effect. Is that really is that a good way to call it? There was a team in here, and they rotated to a what they thought was a better position, and now another team's coming in. So now what NRG has to do here is they don't need to worry about anyone in here necessarily, unless there's some maybe potential free kill points they can get. They just have to worry about back here and any of these teams rotating. This is always what you want to do in the at the end of the game. Um, uh, towards late game is if you're on the edge of the circle, you just or anywhere in the circle, you want you want to always. It doesn't matter what the teams that are already safe and that aren't moving are going to do. What matters is the teams that are going to move. You have to identify who is the biggest threat, what angle is the biggest threat for you, and you have to all decisively watch that, or at least have somebody keep an eye on it. And then if there's something there, all of you need to focus that. This is a big thing for any IGLs out there. It is always telling your team exactly what to look at and what to watch. Uh, Microing them even to that level is very important because if you, if you just take a point and you don't tell your team anything Everyone's gonna kind of be running around looking trying to just shoot people take some damage buff their stats Talk to all their friends about how much better they are than you 
But if you tell your team, hey, we just took this building, make sure to watch Southeast. Make sure like all we need to focus on is Southeast or just say focus Southeast. And this right here um, will make sure that your team is already on a good page um, and already on the right part to make sure that you are gonna always make sure your back is clear in these end circles. Not bad, not bad, man. What about you? Not bad. Yeah, Frex is the IG on this team. Okay. Tough part of any strat is getting to be intuitive for automatically for all three consistently. You can make all sense in the world in review, but it's hard to have time for the same cascading decision making under pressure. A solid IGL prioritizes strat management in the moment to maximize teammates' impact and minimize their confusion. Yes, absolutely. Because the guys who aren't IGL, their brains are shut off. And this isn't, I'm not saying this in a bad way. Their brains are necessarily shut off. They're not worried about thinking about the rotation because that's the IGL's role. Their, their goal is just to make sure that the team is safe while the IGL scouts out. When the IGL kind of figures out um, like a strategy, that needs to be communicated as fast as possible. I think he was lane, yeah. Like Only thing if you agree the best Ember Spirit meta was Battle Fury, Crit, Divine Rapier. Absolutely, dude. I fucking love that shit, man. Wiping a whole team with just one fucking W. Yeah, that shit was awesome. What's Moore's role? Uh, Moore is just uh, support, basically, at this point. It's basically... A Pathfinder is more of a, like, support... He's more of a supporty role now. He just supports Wraith more than anything. Basically, Frex and Moore are basically... Frex is IGL slash support. Moore is support. Ace is, like, just hard Wraith fragger. Now, even though I keep saying Wraith is, like, is, re is really good for IGL... One thing that makes that can if, if if your team is very cohesive, one thing that is actually really nice to do is to not if you if you can get away without having your wraith as an IGL, it frees them up. Because IGLing and trying to do damage is very difficult. It's very difficult. So if you can actually free if you can free your wraith from being IGL and she's very good at like even just making on the spot calls, because that's also important too. If your wraith isn't IGL, if you're in a situation in your team where your wraith is an IGL. Um, give them the authority to be like, hey, if you see a certain portal play that I don't see, you know, just do it. Just take it and just tell us and that's the call. And make sure that the team knows that too. Because the reason, if you can free your Wraith from being IGL, if they're just like a hard fragger, that might not be a bad idea either. Because they don't have to think about all that shit. They can just silly focus on fragging. And I think that's kind of, that's Ace's role in this, is to focus just on fragging. The man is cracked out of his goddamn mind. Frex is, makes the calls, Ace makes the plays, basically. So I don't think it's a bad dynamic that Frex is IGL because he is very good at it. And I wouldn't want Frex on Wraith over Ace because Ace is one of the best Wraiths in the game. Yeah, exactly. If they can get that, di I think the biggest thing that NRG needs to work on from everything I've seen, and I'm sorry, Frex, if you're out there, I don't mean like for you to take offense. I don't know if you think I'm an idiot for saying any of this, but um, I, I do think they're missing like Frex is the IGL, but they need more of that actual leader. Because a lot of their late game mistakes happen because they're just not on the same page. Like, Moore is off doing something else because he thinks it's the play. Ace is sometimes doing something else. They just need to be more cohesive late game. And that's not easy to do. Like, it's very easy said than done. Much easier said than done. That's something that just, like, you have to VOD review as a team and identify that. And your team has to be mature and competent enough to identify that, hey, even though I'm the Wraith or even though I'm Path and I see something, like, maybe, like, you have to respect the calls. Alright, so, portaling early. So, right here. I haven't talked much about it, this rotation in particular. So, you don't always have to take your portal. I see a lot of amateur teams do this. They'll set up a portal, and they'll feel like they almost always have to do that. You don't. Like, if you're an amateurish team, setting a portal early, just to see if, like, that could be a potential play just as an option, is a good option. And if anything, it'll, it'll make sure that the team that you're portaling on or nearby, it'll distract them from probably at least having one person watch the portal. So you can use that as options and then you just walk it in somewhere else. Um, so, But portaling early for the potential to get more options is not a bad idea at all. Uh, so this is a good call by them. The bottom is free. Watson makes low ground really fucking strong in late game. If a team... Now this, this building doesn't have a roof so it doesn't matter as much. But if this building had a roof, like ideally you would be like, Oh, that's the roof high ground. Doesn't have a lot of angles people could shoot at them. High ground wins here. But actually the low ground, if there's a Watson in the game... This kind of like very, very protected low ground is like almost the most ideal in game winning scenario if the circle ends right outside your cover. Um, so like don't underestimate playing underneath houses, playing underneath people that are playing on high ground. Do not underestimate that. 
If you can get a good Watson setup, you're actually probably in the strongest position because nobody's pushing you. Nobody. So this is a good spot right here. We have, we have decent cover. Just watch our back. Watch it's, it's open on this side, obviously, but they can play, uh, I think they can play this back, these back yeah, walls. Team, team so this is good for them. Still. This is a really good spot and I'm surprised this is open, to be honest. I'm very surprised this is open. Golden Guard will struggles with, uh, with this stuff too. Yeah, a lot of teams do. That is the number one difference. If you ever think about like, hey, why are all these like really big dominant teams? Why are they the dominant teams? If you watch any of their VODs, that is the big freaking difference between the TSM and Sentinels versus the lower teams is those guys have a leader and all of that shit. Like even if they make a bad call, it doesn't, a bad call can turn into a good call if you're all following it. That's the biggest thing. Everybody wants to try to make the best call possible, and that's fine. But you can make a bad call as long as your entire team is on the same page and you are cohesive and you fight together. You can easily take out teams. Because you got to remember, a lot of the teams are a little disoriented at the end. There's so much going on. If you communicate properly to your team what needs to be done, you can easily you can take over the end game, even if you're in a bad spot. All right, so this is now. I don't know how NRG plays this out. I didn't watch this. I don't. I think they actually win or they get second. If I remember, like from spectating in game, I don't quite remember. But listen, what, uh, what I, I'm just gonna play it out from here on, and then we'll go back to it and see what happens when we went wrong. But I want you to pay attention to their calls and how focused everybody is and where everyone's attention is on the team. Now that you're watching this, I'm just gonna let it play out to the end, and then we'll go back through it. Can we greet the we can greet this team? We can greet this team on ping. We can greet this team here. Crack TV. Kill points. Kill points. They're mining the left. We can peek. I'm burning one here. I'm, I'm healing. Carefully MP. Just heal up. Heal up. I'm betting. I'm betting. I'm betting. There's still a team on our east side. Yeah, we need to. We need to get cracked. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Under us. Kill up. We kill this team. Yeah, you can arc play it, you have arc. Do you pick up the arcs? I don't have the arc. Don't have the arc. Yeah, I do, I do. Ready, All right, hold me, I'm popping a cell and then I'll go. Top right here, right here. Ready, set, three, two, one, go. I missed, I missed. 114 raid. Uh, Diva Frex. You gotta get that Retsy fucking flick of the wrist. I'm, I'm, I can't get through. It's falling too, it's falling too. Give me on me, help. Behind, 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 behind. You're going to the armor swap. I finished, I finished them. Armor swap thing. Self res. I have no I have no white med. I have no white med. I'm dropping here, here, here. Oh, wait, I'm just getting the port, I'm getting the port down. Oh wait, don't say we can't take port, we can't take port, there's an entity team over there. Okay, I can't yet, I can't yet. Go up for us, go up for us. Uh, I'm sure you've probably already seen it. There's already a, a glaring problem right there. There's a glaring problem right there. That's a good game. They, they got a lot of points out of it. I mean, in, in this format, winning doesn't matter. As long as you get high kills and you get high placement, winning does not matter. So, that is a good game from them. Um, if they wanted to min-max a little bit better, though, there's... I, I see a lot of you guys identified it. Yeah, their comms are a mess, and this happens a lot in their late games. I've been watching a lot of their VODs, because um, I do think they're a very solid team. They could be... They could absolutely be one of the... Like, everyone thinks in, when they think NA... Apex, they think TSM, and they think Sentinels. I very 100% uh, believe that this team could be one of those teams as well. It would be, it wouldn't be just a top two NA team. It would be a top three NA team, and then everybody put put energy in the equation. But this end, these end game comms need to be figured out hard. You heard Frex screaming like five times, maybe. This is where shit starts to get hairy. They got a, they got knocked in that fight underneath that team that tried to push. Oh, wait, don't so we... first off, here, this is the first problem. They didn't really communicate, to, uh, and, and this is hard to do. And I'm not saying any of this like it's easy to do. They didn't communicate a game plan, necessarily. They're kind of just trying to see, like, they're kind of flying by the seat of their pants. They're trying to see what they can take with whatever happens. Because this is hectic. A lot changes. So, 
one of the problems here is Ace is kind of portaling to whatever the hell he can find. None of this, none of their actual game plan was really was communicated. They don't have a set plan going into this, and it's hard, it is hard to do that, especially in a circle like this where it's open. There's not a lot of cover. So this is a very very immediately. This is the first problem. Um, they have they have a they don't know really what to do with the portal. They don't know where to go. They're kind of just looking for an opening, which it does happen like that, and that's not easy to plan around. But this is the first problem. We can't take four. We can't take four. There's another team over there. Uh, and right now, and now three sec with three seconds left to go, they're scrambling to see what ha where to go. Um, obviously, they were they were they were fighting here, so they were a little distracted. But right now, they're scrambling to see where to go. Right now, al already, Frex called twice. Rap right, okay. Within the next couple seconds, his team should be listening to him. Oops, I accidentally hit at the M button. I can't, I can't yet. I can't yet. Okay, Ace says I can't yet. Frex is fighting currently. More is immediately going to wrap or, or just going to help Frex. Uh, now this, I wish I had Frex's POV. Uh, I think his team should have been on him. Um, I think Frex very quickly identified where to go, and his team was just la too late to help him. So, Ace realistically probably should have canceled the bat like two cells ain't really that all that worth it more so than it is not losing your your teammate um but the it, it's more so like they need to be a little bit closer like frex was on the outside and then he was screaming at his team to help him when his his team he never communicated that he was going to that side he never communicated that that's the side he was going to look for he probably was just peeping it and then all of a sudden happened to see an opening and happened to be like yo team we got to go over here his team did come but they were late um and that hurt them a little bit they definitely could have came out of this all three if you look at the so the fight is over if you look obviously this is hindsight right here right but if you look like ace didn't take that much damage he took uh 50 damage and a little bit of hp um he didn't really need to bat sometimes you really at the, in these late games it really you really just be got to be cohesive and fight together screw the bat uh if if your igl is screaming to push right and he's fighting you gotta just go I'm reloading, reloading. But yeah, that was that was a big problem. Um, his team did listen, but it was too late. And a lot of the reason why it was too late was he never really told him that he was going to be over there. Like even him just calming something is simply like looking for an opening over here could immediately. It, if you calm that to your team, that could immediately make, like register to them. Okay, I need to be playing probably close to Frex, or like maybe I need to be looking for an opening there too. Or if he wanted to look for an opening there. He should have probably told his whole team to be there with him too. There's a lot of different ways he could have done it, um, but unfortunately they got to him too late. Uh, obviously they all made it in, or uh, more and Ace made it in, so Frex could have made it in too if his team was there to help him. Um, they kind of just let that team sit there that was there. They tried to arc um, and failed, so they should have communicated. Uh, I, it's clear that Frex wanted to get rid of them and then rotate in, which is a good play. But that was never communicated at like that's the the initial problem is their goal their game plan was never there they never talked about what should have happened what they need to be planning for they didn't have a plan going into this late circle you know and if you don't have a plan going into this late circle you don't come out with you you won't come out with a win if you don't have if you have to make a, a tough rotate so um cohesion is a big part and laying out the game plan for your team is a big part. You should always be aiming your team should always know what their next step is or what openings they should be looking for you know sometimes it is rough sometimes you don't know what um there's a lot of shit going on and you don't know but you can make a simple call like hey we should look to kill a team on our east or on our right we should be looking for a team to eliminate a team over here and then we push here and then not only because right now they're all scattered looking for openings but if they're all together they could easily run over any of these teams almost everybody here is not at full hp if they are all together looking for an opening, they could easily beam a team that's fighting someone else and they can make a rotation, but they are all scattered trying to find their own rotation because they don't have a set game plan. And that's the problem with, with a lot of their late game. It's not just this game. Anyway, sorry, I know a lot went through chat, but I wanted to finish that analysis of this late game. 120, dead. I, I don't know what happened to energy in this game. I'm very curious to see how this plays out. So, okay, so we'll talk about the game now. I've been just talking about it, just shit in general. But I'm going to talk about this game now in a, a little bit. 
And I, again, I don't know how this game plays out for them, but I'm going to go through a couple things when you, you look like a circle, when you look at a circle like this. Um, right now, uh, one thing that worries me a little bit is, I, I don't know their weapons, but R9 Peacekeeper from Ace. Obviously, Ace is fucking nuts with them, right? Um, Lil Gucci Prince, thanks for the follow. Ace is nuts with the R9 PK, but um, that can be rough in certain circles. Uh, this one being one of them. I know he's not a scout gamer, so he'll probably never pick that shit up. But if you are an amateur team, um, I'm not telling. I'm not saying this is a mistake that they're making because they are still a very talented team. But if you are an amateur team and you are trying to figure out how to scrim, one thing you should. And I have, I have talked about this before, but I think we're probably getting a lot of recycle, like a lot of cycling in on like new faces. Um, if you're looking to get in the scrims or you are scrimming and you're just not sure what to do sometimes, if you see open circles like this, if you know the game is going to end in an open circle. You should probably bring the sniper you're most comfortable with, or right now, the G7 Scout. Uh, you should probably, it's it's okay, because some people ask this sometimes, it is okay for your team to run three three Scouts. Because it's very likely, if you get a kitted Scout, it's very it's a very easy swap to R9, if you find one on a body, like very easy. You literally just pick up the R9 and maybe a couple extra boxes of ammo. So, that's one of the things that makes the Scout inherently a good weapon, even if it wasn't busted. Is that it's very easy and very quick to swap to a, a very very good gun for late game um, but open circles you generally want to judge the circles and how you gear yourself for those circles and a lot of this can be done from like the IGL standpoint like your IGL could be like hey I see this circle is gonna be very open uh, try to find snipers or just try to find long range because if your whole team's running like R9 PK in this circle you're gonna run into some issues like, you'll probably clap any team near that's gets in close range but you're gonna run into some issues uh, and one thing I also see uh, amateur teams not doing is accounting for what gun... A lot of, everyone accounts for armor on another team, like when you're trying to push another team. Not a lot of people account for the guns, or at least consciously say it to people. If you were fighting... If you were trying to scout out a team, like, always keep your weapons in consideration. If you have two close-range weapons, you will dominate a team that doesn't have that. Uh, ideally, in a fight. So, like, always keep that in consideration. If you see a team triple scouting and you're walking up to them, and you guys have a lot of close to medium range weapons you will probably beat them in a, in a fight like people a lot of people don't like in, in combat to your team you know if you know what guns your team is running if you have better guns for the situation you, that should be calmed and that will give a little bit more confidence to your team uh on top of uh you'll probably just win the fight i respect i I knew as soon as like w both of you guys had deleted and he didn't, I figured he just forgot to do it. So I was just like, I'm not touching that shit. But anyways, wait, hold on, let me get back here. How the fuck did more just get picked? Oh, did he did he get picked for going for the fucking beacon, dude? It is whatever, dude. Yeah, but rep, he actually was like, no, please don't show it. So I, I love reps. <laughs> God damn it, more. You need portal or not? Four more. Oh, come on, so he was trying. He was just going for the beacon and got fucked. That's it, that's very greedy, dude. That's such an open beacon to every fucking sniper on that hill. That's such a greedy play, but hey, at least they didn't eat that much shit for it. They lost their portal though, but they're not gonna need it because I doubt they're gonna. I doubt they're gonna move. Damn, they just griefed their own game by griefing us. Yeah, beam them. I have nothing. <laughs> Alright, so... Insta karma, that's crazy. Yeah. That was worth. <laughs> oh my god. I love how, like, just Mimi more is, honestly. Yeah, hold on, I'm walking up. Just get it, get it arcing. I don't think that's the door. Get it straight up. This is a little risky because they have the entire fucking hill looking at that could possibly look at this. They need to make this a clean fight. Go crazy, go crazy, go crazy. That's a good opening. Kill them, you guys gotta go, kill them. Yeah, it's a pretty clean opening. Again, I don't know how energy finished here. Don't ruin it either, I don't wanna know. Alright. I'm putting as far as the cannon. Ironically enough, NRG does way better on Pathfinder than when they had Jibby. <laughs> More was just not having a good time on that Jibby, dude. Every time I watch their mods. Yeah. They have a lot of actually really good cover to fuck that team and make sure they're safe here. 
They definitely need to take a team out here. If they don't, shit's gonna look really rough for them. Alright, so yeah, right here. Classic rotate. Um, move into the finest safe spot in zone. Again, if you're an amateur team out there, always be communicating. And they already, they're all on the same page here, so they're doing pretty decently for the most part right now. Because this, and I want you to obviously take into account how their comms go to the end game, because this is usually where they fall apart, is the end game, after this circle. Um, right now, they're all on the same page. They all need to know that they're, they all know that they need to look southeast. They need to make sure that team behind them is dead. And then they need to look onwards for uh, the next rotate. But keep in mind, look for a lot of their mistakes here, because this is usually where their team starts to fall apart in the late game. Down one. I got fucked. I'm, I'm queued. Just easy kill points cleaned up here. I don't know the outcome of this game either. I don't remember. Because we fucking crashed. We fucking crashed. All three of us. We didn't get to play this fucking game. Fast heal, fast heal. I'll take it. It was a two-game series for us, boys. BO2, baby. Woo! But we also didn't play our first two games very well, so I can't completely... I can't completely bitch about that. I'm not going to be a sore loser about it, because we could have played better our first two games. At the end of the day, you only need one game to do well in, and we didn't do that, so... Good little pickoff. All right, so now they have, to, they have to make a really hard rotate here. They're on the fast end of the circle, so they need—they only have 40 seconds. Again, this is where I want people to kind of pay attention here and see if you can. Uh, from this point on, I'm just gonna let it play out. And uh, again, if you're more on the amateur side, see if you can point, pinpoint what goes wrong, if anything goes wrong. I don't know how this game ends, so um, look for it. Oops, I'm muted. I need white meds. Are the white meds? I have four. Oh, yeah, I dropped one as well. I I'm not gonna pour it. Wait, fuck. You have the ulti spell? Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm moving up. We, wait, I don't think we even need to pour it. You don't think we pour it? Here, I'll, I'll drop you an ulti spell though here. I mean, if it's, is it your only one? No, no, I have two. I have two. Alright, I'm using it. Yo, we can park these guys right here. We can park these guys right here. That's all you have, R9 Mastiff. You guys got yeah, it. Uh, dude, my zip guy is not going to fucking need it. I'm, I'm oh, shit, so why is Howl not VIP'd? They're both 1 HP. They're literally both 1 HP. I got this. We can play bottom right here. Bottom is bottom. Or we can play top. We can play top. You can climb on my side. Wait, we turned it. We turned it. We turned it. Follow me. Follow me now. Down, dude. Welcome, my Balkan brother, to the VIP club. Okay, so it looks like they're just mopping here. Decapitated that fool. All right, yeah, they just. So there wasn't actually much to talk about here. It seems like every it was literally just uh, teams in shambles. But one thing they did actually do well versus everything that they usually fuck up is they made they did the very difficult rotate. They played together the entire time. There wasn't ever a time that they were disjointed. Um, Ace even made a call and everyone stuck to it. Like this is usually where they fall apart because they're not on the same page. That was relatively simple though. That wasn't like a very tough end game. All the other teams basically did all of the work. They came in and cleaned up with a Mastiff. Pretty simple. Uh, they didn't actually do too much wrong there. Yeah, that's a pretty free. That was a pretty gifted win for them. Now, let's find out where what actually happened to them because I didn't watch these games actually. I don't know what happened to them in round four and why they all of a sudden melted down. And again, I I do know a lot of the reason is because they went from dropping sorting all game or all tournament to dropping fuel depot, and I know they're not comfortable with that loot because fuel depot fuel depot loot versus sorting loot is a, a massive omega lol. Uh, VOD's muted, by the way, at this point, because he's still playing music, so... Wait, they didn't go fuel. I thought they went fuel in this. Oh, they did. They're gonna swerve. They're gonna swerve, right? Yeah, they're swerving. Okay. Rocker's Guardian. What are the qualifiers for in February? They're, they're for a premier tournament in, like, Romania or something. But, um, it, people underestimate how important the early game is. Obviously, like, most established teams, C, TSM, C, Sentinels, they have this shit down to a fucking pat and to a science, so they know exactly how to fucking deal with it. 
Um, but this is where you see a lot of te you see a lot of teams lose in the early game actually because they're just so slow on everything. This is the most unfortunate thing though when one of your teammates is super split and he needs to grab a gun on the other end. This is one of those things you just can't do much about. Now you can do some next level five head shit and you could and you could calm to your teammate like say Ace needs a PK but he wants an R9 instead. You could be like your teammate could be like oh I'll pick this up for you. Uh, say Ace had an R9 or some or his teammates wants an R9. His teammate could pick up the gun if they happen to have each other's desired weapons and they and his teammate could pick up the gun he could calm that and then he could swap that at some point rather than look at his team right here these guys these boys are ready to rotate already look at this this is a big this is exactly what i've been talking about with the early game it's hard again with guns but this is a big problem right here and right and sometimes you just need to give it up if you if the, even if there's a really strong gun and there is no way for you to get it fast you need to give it up Look at his team up here. They're both by this tractor. They know the circle's gonna be up towards train or wherever. I can't see the whole fucking map. They're ready to go, but look how far- Ace is at least a solid 30 seconds behind because he wants his peacekeeper. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you just have to nut up and just- you can't get that purple mag. Sometimes you can't get that battery- I mean, that, okay, that's not likely. Sometimes you can't get that peacekeeper. Like, you just gotta nut up and go. This is- this is a big mistake right here. Even though, like, obviously purple bolt- he's gonna have a purple bolt on it, it's gonna be pretty kitted. Hammer points aren't bad. They really aren't. Anbu ran that shit a lot, actually. Look how far behind he is from his team. This is really bad right here. Um, like I said, like there's so much going on in the early game that people don't actually understand. Um, that they, they probably, as long as uh, Frex and Moore don't have to stop to wait for him, it, they should be okay. But this is bad. This is bad. They should be running together. They are stop. Okay, they're actually fighting. Sorry, I can't hear anything because the VOD is muted. I think Ace is still playing music. Um, but yeah, look at that. Frex, Frex and Moore actually had to stop and wait at this choke, and now they're in this fight where they didn't need to be. This is bad. You don't drop fuel to lo to rotate late. Like, that's not how that works. You have to go early, and you have to go fast. So, again, and this is not so much because they're, like, bad by any, by any means. These guys have, like, tree down to a fucking T. They could be out of there real fast, but they've never practiced fuel depot. I mean, uh, they've never gotten a chance to because TSM's always there. But there's there's no saying they can't do it in ranked. You know, they can't. There's no saying they can't time themselves off stream, dropping in on on a ranked game and looting all the fuel and then rotating. You know, there are other ways to practice this stuff. Yeah, that's true, Zuzu. So uh, holding the tunnel here is not bad, but it's such a fucking double-edged sword. If they get pushed from either end, and then another team happens to be on the opposite end, they get like spit roasted hard, and they're just gonna get fucked. Them covering their backs isn't a bad thing, but this tunnel is so shaky to hold. Because it's hard to hold both sides competently. It's possible. It, he is jumping. Yes, he is jumping. He's, he, one thing that they are good at, NRG, is they are disciplined enough to actually sit there and actually watch a fucking angle. So many teams, as soon as, like, say, like, Frex is on the other end of the tunnel. Say Frex shoots. As soon as, like, Frex shoots, so many teams, when one person's, like, watching the back... The guy would be like running up to do some fucking damage with him too. It's like, no, motherfucker, just stay there and watch your fucking angle. I know it's a small thing, but like, there are a lot of teams that aren't that disciplined, and then all of a sudden a team rolls up on them, and they're like, wait, how'd they get there? So I'm curious what they, what their end goal actually was. What they, if like, assuming Ace was with them the whole time, where would they have gone? We don't know because that shit was uh, muted. Maybe we might be able to see like pings. Maybe they wanted to hold the tunnel. I actually don't know. Yeah, for sure, Lomax. Uh, ICBM game? Oh, you'll see- you'll see shortly, Zelator. The fucking... UFO-delivered missile that's about to hit them. So they're- they're making the right call here. Holding this tunnel is absolutely the play. I really- I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what the fuck they could have done about what's gonna happen to them. This is where it starts. And they're gonna take space with that, they're gonna take space with that as well. The one thing, and I'm not saying this like conclusively, the one thing they could have done, um, but I don't know if they wanted to play that deep in the cave, was to hold them out further down the cave. Like to hold them out hard at the edge zone. Right here they're giving them a lot of space, and that's giving Sentinels the ability to set up and at least be a little bit safe. Give, it buys Sentinels more time here. If they had, uh, I don't know if they have any accelerants or what, but if they had placed an alt further down by probably where Ace was standing, that nade doesn't happen, and that ground that Ace just gave up doesn't happen. Um, if that was all fenced off, this push is so much harder for Sentinels. 
But they just gave them so much free room here um, that it does end up biting them in the ass. Can't see shit because these fences. Yeah, no, I can. Yeah, I'm just putting fences up. If they break in, I'm popping another one. Okay, so hey, so Frex does have another one. He, granted, he was here for a while. I can't see anything. What's up, Pity Bus? I, I can't throw nades. Yeah, I can't throw nades. Yeah. If you guys don't know what the ICBM is, it's incoming, baby. I think that's the only, like, the, there wasn't much counterplay from this point on that they could have done other than maybe getting hard damage, but Sentinels very clearly outgeared them here. They very clearly are going to push. There it is. Jesus Christ, bro. Like, <laughs> The ICBM, baby. If you haven't seen it, the motherfucking shooting star. What was that thing? Exactly. I'm not gonna lie, I saw this like very loosely. I was watching this, but like very loosely at the time. I thought that was a crypto drone. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. Like, what do you do about that? It takes your wraith out of the fight. Here, I'm gonna. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was a crypto drone because I wasn't like actively watching at the time that it happened. I was kind of like just like low key watching it. How does that nade go off, my friend? UU88. That is not a nade. That is a Pathfinder. That is not an Arc Star. It's an Arc Star on a Pathfinder. But that is not just a mere nade. Like, what do you do about this? Even Ace is like, what the fuck? Holy shit, dude. It's a heat seeking nade, yeah, dude. It's a goddamn tactical, tactical fucking nuclear nuke. Yeah. So that's probably the only real mistake they made. I understand. So the, one of the problems with holding deep into this tunnel is you give any team that wants to, like, maybe teleport into these stairs, you give them some of your tunnel. So that's why they're holding, like, the middle of it, because they don't want to give up this area. But. Knowing that one of the strongest teams in the lobby is right behind them, I really think the only one of the major things they did wrong was they gave them so much space. They should have set up uh, for their death. Like, they set up all their fences here, but they needed to set an alt back here. Or an alt somewhere that could stop uh, Ace from getting naded out here. Ace, them throwing an arc at Ace here and him queuing back is what basically lost them the fight. They gave them too much room to work with, and they let them into the tunnel. Holding them out of the tunnel is the is the easiest place They're they could have leveled. With that. They're gonna take space with that as well. Yeah, so giving them that ground... Beta move. They held, hold, they held that horribly. Oh, it was a horrible spot, too much space. Ace one of the high, they saw him instead of not moving. They have gold. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, no, they held very poorly. And then they got fucking struck down by a missile. So... From a, like a team standpoint, the calls were there, at least in terms of like, Frex was laying out what they needed to do. Um, the actual call itself wasn't the greatest. And a lot of that stems from the, uh, I think Frex has said that he was very unconfident. He wasn't very, he didn't feel good about Fuel Depot. He thinks that's why they lost. And I don't think it's necessarily because of Fuel Depot. I think it's because they just haven't practiced it. They were, they were basically running a strategy they've never done. And that's hard to do right out of the gate. All right, so they, they want to move further up. There's a team gatekeeping them a little bit, though. I want to see what happens here. Another team is here, so... They don't, they don't, so they lost the trades there. I'm assuming they lost the trades there in damage. One of them has gold, so... They can't push that. Wait, so... what? What is their plan here? Maybe just play east side now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just play east side. They don't have like a clear like contingency plan here. And this could I don't know if they die here, but this could bite them in the ass. Alright, whoa. Like that fucking beam and heal. Jesus Christ, they used to just fucking flopped. No, they're not, they're far. I'm surprised they didn't take this from the start. Like, why? I guess they wanted to rotate all the I think they wanted to rotate all the way around and get, like, just. They wanted to get out of caps and go all the way around. I think that's what their plan is, but it doesn't seem to be communicated here. It's gonna be taken, I think, by now. 
That's all. Like, it's just... All right. all right, so this... Let's talk about the game a little bit, since all they did was sit in the house for, like, forever. 17 squads left, so there's actually less squads, probably, than I would have anticipated. This circle's gonna be a little rough. Um, I, th I believe there's a team literally right up here. I think I think this is the game where they, like, rotate up and they fight here and they die, but I don't quite remember. Um, I think... Was this the 120 pump games? The two times 120 pump? You hate to see that. Um, but anyways... Um, yeah, that, I mean, that's not, that call for them to push this team, if that's, if this is that game, is definitely smart. They just need to play edge here. They're not getting in anywhere safe. Uh, Frex doesn't have good armor. I don't know what their guns are. You know, if they had, like, triple scout here, they might be able to take, uh, poke people out of positions. But this is probably, th them pushing this fight is not, yeah, is it's not a bad one. A zip up in mark, I don't, I, I, again, but I don't know. We'll see what they actually do. They have to just basically play the edge here and make sure they, they get on a strong spot with a decent cover. Like the cliff, the cliff isn't bad, but it can get poked by a lot of people. They can play right under the cliff though, because I think the high ground is enough. If they're trying to like rat it a little bit. There's a lot of like free spots they can play, but they do have to take a fight here more than likely. I don't see him, I don't see him. Take it, take it, take it. They're, 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 they're there, but they're like... Oh yeah, right here, right here. Give me holding. Fuck. Yeah, you can, they're far. This is a bit weird for having only Ace take the zip, but I, I know why they did it. They did it to have Ace scout, basically, because they don't want to all commit to it. Popping back. They don't want to obviously all commit to the zip, or else they c Frex can easily get picked just being on white armor, so... They might be careful. It's a, it's a safer play, but it also could have ended up pretty bad. I'm taking space, I'm taking space. Headshot Rusty, down Rusty. Okay. This is a really good, really good third party here. There's a shot on this, we still need it. Did you search Rusty yet? That's a really good take. That's exactly what they needed to do. Now they have a lot of really good cover to work with. This is the fight. Give me team. He's bubble. 127 raise. 121 both. Push it. 121 and 127. The little guys are weak. Red the area. Like Shoot the small guys or one shot, the only one. Fucking hit, hit them. Fucking hit them. God, that's rough, man. That's just them losing the fight, dude. That hurts to watch, dude. Like, you could feel Ace's soul being drained out of that. That hurts, man. That sucks so much. And I hate it too, because Ace seems like such a nice dude, but like, you could you could hear his passion being- His passion literally being taken out of him right there. I mean, I wasn't- I was really far back. I don't know, I think if we win that fight, we just have our whole side of the circle except for- Yeah, there's nothing strategically wrong with it. They played- what They did what they should have right there. They just didn't win the fight. First of all, it should have been so much cleaner. Second of all, like- I, I I mean we didn't probably have to, but I don't I don't see why not. Like we're full health, like everything. Like I don't know, that's just a fight we win. Yeah, I mean I literally, Gibby was literally. Like I wish I had all of their POVs for that fight. I really want to see what happened. But then you hit the other guy. I hit, yeah, I hit 121 Y and I hit 127 Uh I didn't see a rewind. Give me one sec. I just wanted to see. I wanted to see if my boys survived there. I hate how either Frex or Moore didn't say that they missed because clearly someone completely missed, yeah. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. Like, I think Ace wants to, like, just basically be like, yo, which one of you just didn't do damage? But neither of them are saying, like, yeah. They're literally 80 damage. Like, that's it. R9, that's free. Yeah, I mean, in bubble, they're double PK, though. Yeah, because the fact of the matter is, um, if anyone's wondering what happened to FlyQuest and... I mean, all my boys, all the people that normally watch me know what happened to me. Uh, BRs are not, they, at least, like, they could be, but the way Apex is set up, it's not profitable for orgs to be in. So, like, be, keep in mind, after this tournament, you guys might see a lot of orgs drop out. It's not because the game is dying, necessarily. It's because the, this game is not profitable for a lot of orgs. There are just aren't enough revenue streams within the game to sustain a lot of orgs paying their players. It just, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, Trippy Jesus, thanks for the follow. I'll take a PK. I'm in, yeah. Uh, bring your flatline. So, don't believe the narrative that the game is dying because orgs are leaving. It, no. Fuck. That sucks.
Uh, a lot of it is just, like, orgs just don't make money on this game. Alright, well, that's the end of NRG. Saw a lot of recurring themes in their gameplay. Saw a lot of, uh... I really wish we could have seen what happened here. This Their, their round 4 uh, exit is really fucking unfortunate. In the first game, they could have done a lot about that. The second game, they just needed to hit those fucking shots, man.